स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडेस लेक्चर इन टूडेस लेक्चर वील हैव ए कंपेरेटिव अकाउंट ऑफ द क्वांटम मैकेनिकल मॉडल्स वी हैव डिस्कस्ड सो फार सो फार वी हैव सीन क्वाइट ए फ्यू क्वांटम मैकेनिकल मॉडल्स एंड हैव ऑप्टेंड एग्जैक्ट सॉल्यूशन ऑफ दिस क्वांटम मैकेनिकल मॉडल्स वाइल्ड वे डिस्कसिंग ए मॉडल बाय इट सेल्फ वी आर फोकस्ड ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम but in today's class what we will do is that we will have all the models at a glance and then we would see how the systems are different where are the possible applications of this system and how the solutions are different and is there a common story behind them this is the topic of today's discussion just to remind you we have discussed quite a few quantum mechanical models and we solved them exactly the first problem that we took up was particle in a box here we defined a particle with certain mass which was restricted to a particular region of space while discussing this problem we emphasized that particle in a box is quite a useful problem because any atomic or molecular system you see they actually represent particle in a box problem because an atom has an electron which is confined to the nucleus in a molecule there are groups of nuclei and then there are a bunch of electrons the electrons are confined to this box created by the nuclear environment so molecular systems per se can be represented as particle in a box where the particle is an electron which goes around the box that is the molecular environment of course we dealt with this system by considering only one particle and we neglected the interaction of this particle with other particles so that way that problem that we solved was simple than than a typical uh, molecule that we have but in several cases we can actually see where the conjugated i ins are there so there the pi electrons and sigma electrons are separable so we can treat for example delocalization of pi electrons effectively with a particle in a box kind of problem the next problem that we dealt with was harmonic oscillator while well, particle in a box showed the translational motion of a particle with harmonic oscillators we could discuss about the vibrational motion of a molecule we can use harmonic oscillator prop model for any system which responds to an external field and then gets disturbed from its equilibrium position but it goes goes via this equilibrium position in a to and fro motion so in all such cases we can use harmonic oscillator but for molecular systems molecular vibration is an important field where harmonic oscillator solutions are heavily used the next three problems are in a way related to each other they are particle in a, in on a ring particle in a sphere or rigid rotor these three systems are related to each other because all the, all these three systems show a rotational movement of a particle for example particle in a ring it shows rotation on on a plane on a on a ring particle in a sphere shows rotational motion on a sphere on the surface of a sphere and rigid rotor shows rotational motion around this point now these three problems we could solve by invoking the spherical coordinate systems and in particular we discuss angular momentum operator to discuss the solution of this problem the final or the most complex problem that we uh, handle is the hydrogen atom problem here one electron which goes around the nucleus so therefore there is an angular motion uh, possible there but unlike particle in a ring or a sphere or a rigid rotor the distance of this electron from the nucleus that means the r the distance between the nucleus and electron that also is changing so that's how hydrogen atom is different from the other three angular examples we had we have discussed so now what we will do is that we'll take we'll discuss some features of these problems 
consider the particle in a box first problem that we uh, first thing that we will discuss in uh, today's class now is that whenever we have a quantum mechanical system to solve we start with the Hamiltonian of the system because Hamiltonian is the thing that we know about the system and this Hamiltonian operator is our starting point. So, it is very important that we see or we are able to write the Hamiltonian because this is the first thing that as an user we provide for this system. For example, when I have a particle in a box the Hamiltonian since I have a single particle so which has which shows some kinetic energy and I write this kinetic energy as the usual kinetic energy operator form plus the potential energy. But we kept the potential energy 0 within the box and potential energy infinite outside the box. So, this potential energy is either 0 or it is infinite depending on whether the particle is within the box or whether the particle is out of the box. So, therefore, when V is infinite so, we saw that the wave function would vanish because we have huge amount of uh, potential that the system can never cross and when V equals 0, we actually do not have this term. So, therefore, essentially we discussed about the kinetic energy of the particle or the translational motion of this particle within this box. Now, in particle in a box problem, our potential energy was constant whether it was 0 or infinite, it was constant across uh, x value. So, this was from 0 to L in the box of length L. Next we took up a problem the harmonic oscillator where the Hamiltonian. So, again we have a particle. So, whose kinetic energy is again given by d square by dx square. So, we are defining this harmonic oscillator in one dimension plus there is potential energy and this potential energy is the harmonic potential half k x square where k is the force constant corresponding to this oscillator. Now, this form of the potential energy gives rise to this potential the harmonic potential. Of course, we can uh, for other systems wherever it is necessary instead of a uh, quadratic potential we can have a uh, quartic potential and so on, but this is the simple model that we use the harmonic oscillator model. Unlike particle in a box this here the potential energy is a constant uh, is a varying uh, is a function that keeps changing with the value of x, but then there is symmetry between. So, this is if it is x uh, is 0 this side is plus this side is minus. So, it goes from minus infinite to plus infinite and the potential is symmetric along x because we have this half k x square in the potential energy term. So, particle in a box represented a hard potential because we saw we saw a sudden rise of potential from 0 to infinite whereas, the harmonic oscillator problem showed a soft potential where the potential energy is a varying function along x. Now, these two are the problems that we discussed in in terms of linear coordinates along along x axis or one one coordinate system. Now, we come come to the angular uh, motion where the particle is going around a uh, ring. So, again the Hamiltonian if I have to write down. So, again this, there is a particle with some mass m. So, I write down a square by 2 m. Now, what I have is particles showing a motion along x y plane for example, because here I have now two plane I have to define two axes x y and I see that the, when the particle goes around a ring it actually goes in x and y axis. So, instead of writing down in x and y terms, so I could have written this Hamiltonian as minus a square by 2 m d square by d x square plus d square by d y square. Instead of writing it in Cartesian coordinate, what we did is that we changed the syst coordinate system and we went to a spher spherical uh, coordinate system where we had the variables are r, theta and phi, but as long as the particle is moving along a particular value of r radius r or so, therefore, r is constant and as long as the particle is going around a ring that means on one plane. So, therefore, theta is also constant. So, I have only one variable which is varying that is phi. So, the Hamiltonian became h square divided by 2 m square 2 m r square d square by d phi square where phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. So, here phi goes from uh, 0 to 2 pi. 
Now, this is the Hamiltonian. Of course, we said that there is no potential energy that the particle experiences when it goes around the ring. From a ring, we went to sphere by imagining that a sphere is simply a stack of rings kept one below the other. And when the particle is going around a on, on the surface of a sphere, it essentially can jump from one ring to another ring. While it is in one ring, of course, it can show a motion around uh, this ring. So, when it shows the motion around uh, a particular ring, then of course, we know that it is like particle in a, on a ring, but when it jumps from one ring to another ring. So, here in this case, what happens among r, theta and phi, we see both of course, phi is changing. Here, theta also changes because theta is the angle that the point makes with the, the uh, position vector corresponding to this point makes with the z axis. So, in the similar language, particle in a ring, if I say r, theta and phi, so r is constant, theta is constant, only phi is changing. And in case of particle in a sphere, r is constant because we are discussing uh, for a particle which, which is going around a sphere of constant r where here only theta and phi, these two angular variables are changing. In this case, the Hamiltonian turns out to be, again, I, I could write minus s square by 2 m, then the, uh, the Laplacian, which is d square by dx square plus d square by dy square plus d square by dz square in Cartesian coordinate, but we will, we have replaced it uh, in, uh, with, with spherical coordinates. And in spherical coordinates, when my r is constant, in that case, what happens to the Laplacian is this is simply the Lysentrian divided by r square. So, that makes uh, our life simpler because what happens is that when you see this Lysentrian, this is an operator. So, which, which depends on only theta and phi, uh, whereas the Laplacian operator depends both uh, uh, Laplacian operator shows uh, differentiation uh, with respect to r, theta and phi, whereas Lysentrian shows differentiation only res with respect to theta and phi. So, now the advantage of this is that we know a minus h square uh, multiplied by lambda square is our L square, which is the angular momentum, square of angular momentum divided by 2 m square or L square divided by 2 i, where i is the moment of inertia. So, now what we have obtained here is that the Hamiltonian is a constant multiplied by L square and we knew the solution of L square. So, we could fit this in, but again let us continue our discussion when we go to rigid rotor for example, rigid rotor it is a rotor. So, this this for example, let us say this is a diatomic molecule. So, this can go uh, rotate uh, in all, all three uh, directions in this in uh, Cartesian coordinate. So, therefore, when it rotates in all three directions, you would see that it will create actually a sphere. So, in rigid rotor what happened is that we had two masses m 1 and m 2. Here, this is the first example where we discussed about two different bodies, two different particles, although they are connected to each other by a fixed uh, distance. So, that is why we call it rigid. So, it is a rotor which has two particles at two ends, but and it can rotate uh, on all three di uh, dimensions in Cartesian coordinate, but it can do so while the bond dis uh, while the distance between the two particle is this constant because this is a rigid rotor. So, therefore, while particle in a ring or a sphere or harmonic oscillator or a particle in a box, we always considered a single particle. For the first time in rigid rotor, we consider two particles, but they are fixed, they have a fixed distance. The Hamiltonian of this, you see when the this rigid rotor makes rotational motion, it essentially represents a sphere. So, therefore, the Hamiltonian is no different from the Hamiltonian that we had for particle and a sphere. But one important thing we understood while discussing this rigid rotor is that whenever we have a two body system, we could show exactly that we can express this two body system as two effective one body systems. If you remember here, the, Hamilton, the kinetic energy of operator corresponding to this rigid rotor would have involved two kinetic energy terms, one each correspond, uh, corresponding to each of these uh, two particles. 
Alternatively, we could write this kinetic energy of, uh, operator in terms of two one effective one body problem, where the first one body problem was the translational motion of the center of mass, which could be a, uh, which is similar to a particle in a box kind of problem. The second problem is the internal motion between the, the, the two. So, therefore, we separated the internal and the overall translational motion and we looked at only the internal motion of this uh, system. So, we had this rigid rotor Ham uh, Hamiltonian. At the end, we came to the hydrogen atom where the Hamiltonian had of course, the kinetic energy of the nucleus plus kinetic energy of the electron and plus the potential energy of the electron and nucleus which is actually a repulsive sorry uh, forgive me which is an attractive interaction between the electron and the nucleus because electron and nucleus they have opposite charges. And this attractive force uh, uh, energy that we have we expressed in terms of Coulomb uh, potential. So, here a square by 2 m nucleus the Laplacian of the nucleus minus a square by h bar square by 2 m the electron the Laplacian of the electron minus z e square 4 pi epsilon 0 r where r is the distance between the electron and nucleus. So, we see how we increase the complexity of the problem starting from particle in a box to hydrogen atom problem. Particle in a box and harmonic oscillator they depend they were defi defined as one dimensional problems particle in a ring sphere and rigid rotor we saw angular motion in that and in case of hydrogen atom how is it different from rigid rotor it is different from rigid rotor is that in case of rigid rotor the distance is between m1 and m2 is fixed so therefore we had only theta and phi at the changing coordinates but in case of hydrogen atom we have r theta phi all three are allowed to change. So, this gives us an idea about the Hamiltonians of the different models that we have discussed so far. Now, let us look at the uh, once we have written down the Hamiltonian of this system we of course, would immediately go ahead and write down the Schrodinger equation corresponding to this uh, uh, Hamiltonian. So, we always had this h psi equals e psi problem that we have to solve. So, this is a, 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 a quite a, an important problem where you see when you when you wanted to begin solve this problem we have idea only about the Hamiltonian. So, this is rather general whenever we are solving a quantum mechanical problem only information that is available to us is the Hamiltonian. Whereas, the wave function and the energy these two are unknowns and they would come out from this solution from the solution of this equation. But we know when we have one equation it is difficult it is it's not possible to find out two, two independent variables two unknowns. So, how do we get in all these cases because we have to remember that we first had this equation that is one condition the other condition we always invoked that is there was always some boundary condition that the system obeyed. Using this boundary condition so we have now two different conditions and we think within that we could obtain two different uh, unknowns that is the wave function and the energy. What we do is uh, now is look at the eigenvalues of these problems. So, for example, particle in a box problem we had E n given by n square h square divided by 8 m l square where m is the mass of the particle, l is the length of the box and h is, is the Planck's constant and n is an independent quantum number where n goes from 1 to so on so forth. Remember n is 0 not allowed. We discussed why it is not allowed when, when, when we are uh, discussing this problem. The other thing that you must notice is that the energy here depends as function of n square. Now, we would have more idea about to, to compare when we write them uh, down the other solutions. In case of partic uh, harmonic oscillator the energy that we had is h bar omega n plus half. So, here n goes from 0, 1, 2, 
and so on and so forth. Please note the difference. Here n equals 0 is allowed, here n is 0 not allowed. The lowest value of n is 1. So, therefore, the 0 point energy or the lowest energy available to the system is simply h square divided by 8 ml square. Here, the lowest possible value of this quantum number n is 0. So, therefore, E 0 is your half h bar omega and this is the 0 point energy of this system. When you went to the particle in a, on, on a ring, we uh, had this expression where the energy uh, levels for particle in a ring depended on m square. So, here this is has n dependence, this has m square dependence where the values of m were 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2 and so on and so forth. So, the lowest so, m is again the lowest value of this quantum number is 0 and the corresponding 0 point energy is 0. In this case, the particle is said to be at rest that it is not showing any uh, movement. The other thing that you notice here is that we have now plus 1 and minus 1, plus 2 and minus 2 energy levels allowed. So, that means while uh, we would have same energy when m is plus 1 or m is minus 1 because you see the energy depends as m square. So, therefore, we have this degeneracy coming into picture. Whereas, particle in a one dimensional box or partic uh, harmonic oscillator problem did not have this degeneracy. The degeneracy that we are experiencing in particle in a ring problem is the manifestation of the fact that the particle is now moving along x y axis on a plane and there is a symmetry in, in, in this motion. Of course, we have converted this x y to r. So, therefore, we see only one uh, sorry uh, we have uh, ex expressed the Hamiltonian in terms of the spherical coordinates where only phi is varying where r is r is uh, constant, but then we but then we see that the the circular motion uh, that the particle shows goes around the x and y axis because of this degeneracy that is present in the system we have uh, sorry because of the symmetry that is present in the system our energy levels showed degeneracy going to the particle in a uh, spheres problem so where e uh, was given as l uh, as a function of l the energy levels came out to be where the, in this case i and this case i is the moment of energy are given as m r square, m is the mass of the particle and r is the radius of the ring or radius of the sphere that this uh, particle is experiencing. All right, so, here what happens? L, what are the values of L? L can be 0, 1, 2 and so on and so forth. For each value of L, we have m going from minus L to plus L in the step of 1. So, therefore, for each value of L, we have 2L plus 1 number of M values. So, we will come back to the uh, um, to the degeneracy. So, in this case, the degeneracy uh, of the levels actually keeps changing. So, the degeneracy is 2L plus 1 here. So, the if we write down the compare the degeneracy of the systems, degeneracy for particle in a box is, is 1. They are all non degenerate level as long as we are discussing particle in a one dimensional box. Harmonic oscillator, one dimensional harmonic oscillator, we had uh, um, energy levels non degenerate. So, here for particle in a ring, the lowest energy level is degenerate, all other energy levels are two fold degenerate. So, for each va non zero value of m, we have a plus m and minus m allowed. So, therefore, the degree of degeneracy is 2. And here for particle in a sphere, the degree of degeneracy keeps changing. For example, if L is 0, the degree of if the system is non degenerate, when L is 1, well, we have the system is threefold degenerate, and so on and so forth. So, while the first two cases they were non degenerate, particle in a ring, only the lowest energy level is non degenerate, others are twofold degenerate, particle in a sphere, and similarly, rigid rotor their de degree of degeneracy keeps increasing as they as we increase L value. So, rigid rotor solution closely follows the, the solution of particle and sphere. So, we need not discuss them uh, that separately. Uh, then we come to the uh, final problem the uh, uh, in 
hydrogen atom problem. So, the hydrogen atoms pro, uh, uh, solution turned out to be where h bar mu is the if, uh, uh, reduced mass of the system which is equivalent to the mass of electron, a is the Bohr's radius which is a constant. So, uh, you have this constant whose value turns out to be uh, 13.6 electron volt multiplied by z square, z is the nuclear charge which is 1 in case of hydrogen and divided by n square where this n the quantum number. So, here n again it 0 n equals 0 is not allowed n equals 1, 2, 3 are allowed. Now, when we define this n, we also know that corresponding to an n value, we have l values which goes from 0, 1 until n minus 1. And for each value of l, the m values goes from minus l to plus l in the step of 1. So, therefore, for a given value of n, we have n number of l values. So, for n equals 1, we have 1 l value that is 0. For n equals 2, we have 2 number of l, 2 number of l values that is 0 and 1. And for n for a given value of n, we have n number of l values. And for each l value, we have 2 l plus 1 number of m values. When we take them together, we see that the degree of degeneracy is n square. So, for n equals 1, we have 1 energy level when n, n equals 2, we had uh, 4 energy levels and so on and so forth. Of course, this n square became 2 n square when we discussed the spin of the uh, electron. So, this n square is when we are silent about the spin. So, we are talking about the orbitals. When we talk about the spin, that means the spin orbitals is are the unit functions. In that case, it can become 2 n square. So, please uh, bear this in, in mind. So, we say that the degree of degeneracy is an inter interest interesting function as we change our system. The other thing that we could uh, see is that the dependence of the energy level on the quantum number. So, n square dependence, n dependence, a, m square, m l into l plus 1. So, that you see that uh, the, the de de uh, dependence on the energy level on the quantum numbers also keeps changing and here is a function of 1 over n square. So, here we saw the, uh, the degree of degeneracy and the energy levels of the uh, system. All right. So, if we uh, now we are uh, we would go ahead and discuss actually the eigen functions or the or the solutions of this hamiltonian uh, uh, hamiltonian with respect to the wave function or the eigen functions of the system so we have again this is the equation that we solved we discussed about the solutions that are coming out of uh, the energy now let us look at the wave function so the wave functions uh, for particle in a box problem, we had 2 divided by L under square root sin n pi x divided by L, where we saw that the wave function is simply a sine function and this term is the normalization constant. When we look at this uh, some of the uh, lowest uh, and low energy uh, eigen functions, we see that this is a sine function between 0 to L. So, when n is 1, we simply have the function like this. When n is 2, we have a function where we see a node appearing at L by 2. See, when x equals L by 2, we have this function becoming 0. So, therefore, a node appears and as I go higher and higher energy levels, of course, I am not writing the energy levels, you should remember that energy level depends on n square. Uh, so, as we see, uh, uh, we see that as we go higher and higher energy, the uh, number of nodes are increasing. And when I draw the probability uh, density, 
we would see that we have more number of waves coming closer and as in the same way when you go to very large value of n you would see that more number of crest and troughs in this probability density will be appearing closer. So, it will essentially show a classical motion for large value of n. Coming to the particle in a uh, sorry the harmonic oscillator problem we had the solution to this problem was psi n given by the uh, a normalization constant multiplied by a Hermite polynomial of uh, nth order and multiplied by e to the power minus rho square by 2. This Gaussian function multiplied by a Hermite polynomial, Hermite polynomial of different order for example, h 0, 0 order polynomial is uh, Hermite polynomial is simple 1, first order was 2 x or 2 rho. So, therefore, this is a polynomial and this is a Gaussian function. When we plotted this, uh, uh, this wave functions, let us plot them in a uh, harmonic oscillator potential, we would see that the wave functions actually, uh, so the lowest wave function, lowest eigen function, you would see that it, it is, it, it is has maximum value at x equals uh, 0, rho equals 0, it goes down as, as a Gaussian function e to the power minus rho square by 2, but what we experience here, unlike particle in a box, the wave function actually leaks through this potential barrier. This is the process of tunneling, which is not seen in case of particle in a box problem. Why is it so? Because particle in a box, we have the boundary has infinite potential, but here we have a soft boundary. So, where the wave function actually tunnels through. So, when I go for the higher wave functions, I would see this feature. Coming to particle in a ring, so we had psi m as a function as e to the power i m phi, where phi goes from 0 to pi. So, for the first time we saw a complex eigenfunction, of course, we can write it as a cosine function plus sine function. So, the energy levels will go as m equals 0 and non degenerate m equals plus 1 or minus 1, m equals plus 1 or uh, plus 2 or minus 2 and, and so, so on so forth. And this is this is how the energy level uh, spectrum would appear for the particle in a ring. When I talk about the Eigen functions, so of course, I have a uh, real part, I have an Im imaginary part. So, instead of writing that in the in the usual in a, on a ring, I am opening up the ring from 0 to 2 pi and if I have to draw the real part which is a cosine function. So, you would see that this will appear something like this. So, at cos pi this will become minus 1, 0 it will become plus 1, 2 pi it will become plus 1. So, this is how the cosine real part of the solution looks like. The complex part, the sine part, uh, sine function would look like this. So, now we have a sine function and a cosine function and if I have to write down the probability, so psi m absolute value, you would see that I would have always 1 over 2 pi. So, because e to the power plus i m phi multiplied by e to the power minus i m phi that will give me 1. So, therefore, the probability density is, is uniform throughout the ring. We, dis we discussed about this uh, particle in a uh, ring problem. When the next, when we discuss the particle in a sphere, which we used as the Eigen function of the L square operator and the Eigen function of the L square operator are at the spherical harmonics. So, and we express this spherical harmonics in terms of this Legendre polynomials and which are also with associated Legendre functions. So, multiplied by this phi term. So, we see that the spherical harmonics has two part the s of theta which depends on theta function and then t of phi. So, this is a function of l and m and this is a function of m and with using, using this we could describe the spherical harmonic function. Uh, which is the solution for particle in a sphere or a rigid rotor. Now, 
when you go to hydrogen atom, the hydrogen atom problem was the most complex problem that we discussed. The total wave function now would have r, theta and phi dependence which we discussed as a radial which has having two solution one the radial part of the solution and the second one is the angular part. Now, the angular part is simply spherical harmonics. So, everything that we knew we use that we were interested mostly in the radial part. When you looked at the radial part we saw that it depends on n and l. So, the wave function and then in addition to the radial part we also discussed what is uh, r square uh, r n l square uh, r square which is the uh, radial distribution function which gave rise to the beautiful shell model that we are so familiar with. So, to uh, so in today's lecture we had a comparative discussion of all the quantum mechanical models we have discussed so far. So, we could see the uh, relation between them, the differences between them. Thank you for your attention.